In many fish species, males are the primary, if not sole, parent. But male seahorses, sea dragons, and pipefish in the family Cygnathidae take fatherhood to a whole new level. They have embraced the role of incubator, too. And in some species, the males actually experience a full-blown pregnancy, complete with giving birth to live young. This feed has required some interesting modifications, including alterations to a really important part of their immune systems. And learning more about how male pregnancy is even possible in these fishes could help us better understand our own immune systems and how to help when they falter, like when they're attacked by HIV. Now, you might think of pregnancies as pretty run-of-the-mill, considering that they happen in our species all the time. But there are a number of challenges to overcome for a pregnancy to be successful. Arguably, one of the biggest challenges is keeping the parent's immune system from rejecting the fetus, since from the body's perspective, a fetus is half foreign. And that's basically what immune systems are for, getting rid of foreign material. And the immune systems in vertebrates like us and fish are especially good at this because of something called adaptive immunity. That's a whole arm of the immune system that protects us against specific pathogens. It also creates a memory of our experiences with them to help protect against potential future encounters. But it can't really discriminate between good and bad encounters. So in theory, a fetus should trigger the same alarm as a deadly virus. But most of the time, it doesn't. And it wasn't until 2012 that researchers figured out why. It turns out that pregnant mammals' bodies tamp down on the activity of genes that control adaptive immunity to ensure they don't eject the partial foreigners from their wombs. And in a 2020 study, it was discovered that pregnant seahorses and pipefish have adopted a similar strategy, with a slightly dramatic twist. Now, before I reveal that twist, it's important to understand that some of the most important genes in the adaptive immune system are found in a region of the gene called the Major Histocompatibility Complex, or MHC for short. And the MHC is made up of three classes of genes, which are super creatively named MHC1, 2, and 3. Now, each of these codes for important proteins, but MHC2 proteins are especially important. They go on the outside of many cells and are responsible for sounding the alarm when an invader is spotted. Specifically, they bind to proteins called CD4 receptors on other immune cells that come to help, passing along insider knowledge about the invader. That way, the body can launch an effective assault and remember the foe in case it ever dares to show its face again. Now, during a mammalian pregnancy, the MHC genes are downregulated, taking the immune system off high alert so it doesn't attack the fetus. The fetus is also surrounded by a layer of specialized cells called trophoblasts, which don't have MHC2s, so they help shield the embryo from the parent's immune cells. Pregnant seahorses and pipefish also downregulate MHC genes in general, but they don't stop there. They've completely ditched MHC2 genes altogether. And living without these genes is kind of like the immune system equivalent of living without a vital organ. Based on our current understanding of the adaptive immune system, without MHC2, these fish should not be able to remember pathogens and protect themselves against them. Which is kind of a head-scratcher, considering these fish spend their entire lives in water where viruses are the most abundant thing around. The discovery that they're able to survive in this environment without a vital part of their immune system was downright shocking to researchers. So they quickly realized that the adaptive immune system is probably more flexible than they'd originally thought, and can still be effective without MHC2. And this newfound flexibility could give us a better understanding of our own immune system, and provide new ways of treating a variety of diseases. But especially, it could help us tackle HIV infections. You see, human immunodeficiency virus replicates in cells that have CD4 receptors on their surface. And it replicates at significantly higher levels when those cells' CD4 receptors are are attached to MHC2 proteins. So basically, the virus has figured out a way to make one of the most important parts of our immune system work against us. But if we really understood how seahorses can ditch MHC2 genes without compromising overall immunity, maybe we could find a way to deprive HIV of what it needs most. And that's just one example. There are other kinds of immune deficiencies that involve MHC2, so maybe studying seahorses will help us develop better treatments for them. Plus, MHC2 proteins are major players in a number of different diseases, especially autoimmune conditions. So by understanding seahorse fatherhood better, we can better equip ourselves to tackle things like diabetes, celiac disease, and lupus. Who would have thought that all of that could come from studying a little fishy father. Thanks for watching this episode of SciShow. If you want to learn more awesome things about fish, you might want to check out our episode on three fish with unexpected abilities. And before I go, I want to give a quick shout out to our patrons. We think you're all fantastic, and we really appreciate your continued support. If you're not a patron but want to learn more about the community, you can head on over to patreon.com slash scishow. 